Hello, welcome back to my channel. Uh, something a couple of days ago put me in mind of vignettes and how many ways there are to make vignettes uh, and how we do that. As with anything with Adobe software, there are several different ways to make a vignette and you will find your own way and it will fit into your workflow as you want it to do. My usual workflow is to catalog and save in Lightroom. Then I go off out to Photoshop to make changes. I go off out to Nick, um, the Nick collection or to Topaz software, do everything I want to do, come back into Lightroom and then I'll put my finishing touches on. I should have said I may make a few basic adjustments in Lightroom before I go out to Photoshop. But so here I am, I'm back into um, Lightroom. I've made all the changes I want to make. My photo is finished apart from a vignette, which I usually do in Lightroom. So let's have a look at the different ways we can do them and what we can do with them. The most logical way is to just use the vignette, post crop vignetting tool in the effects panel. Okay, slider here, amount. If you go to the left, it makes it lighter. If you go to the right, it makes it darker. Simple as that. The feathering at the bottom here sort of does what it says. If you take it all the way off by going to the right, there's no feathering at all. It's a hard border. And if you go all the way to the left, it's a very soft transition between the vignette and the, um, the centre of the picture. I tend to go for quite a, a big transition, so quite a lot of feathering. The roundness does as it's said. I'll take the feathering back off so you can see. It's rounder. Or it's more square. Okay, you can see it getting rounder and rounder. Okay. And basically, that's it. That is how that tool works. So, I'm just going to reset that. And I'm going to show you a different way to do it. Which is more versatile. There are a lot more things you can do with it. And I'll show you how I, how I use this tool. Which is the radial filter. It's up here on the toolbar above your tools down here. Click on the radial filter and a new dialog box will open and this dialog box applies to your radial filter. Come out onto your picture, click and drag and you can make a circle, a shape, anything else, a circle, an oval or anything else and if I hover on here a little mask will come up around the edge and it's going to tell me that any if any change I make over here will only be affected, will only show in the red areas. Okay, so as you can see it'll make a vignette and at the moment the way it's set it'll make a nice feather that's set at about 50% there, a nice feather out to the edges. Okay. If you want your pins to show all the time, this is called an editing pin. Just pop down here and click always. I'm going to leave it on that for now, um, but I would usually have it on auto. So if I have my cursor anywhere around here, it's not showing. It's only when I come onto the picture. And the reason I do that is so when I've made a few changes, I can just move my cursor and review the picture. But for now, I'm going to put it on always so you can see what it is I'm doing. So. If we alter the exposure, same as with the slider in the vignette tool, if I go to the left it gets lighter, if I go to the right it gets darker. Okay, so let's just put a bit of a darker vignette on there. Simple. Now, you might not always want your vignette to be in the centre. I certainly very rarely have a vignette in the centre. This is my subject here. Or maybe that, maybe both of those blooms there are my subject. Maybe I want the centre of my vignette to be over them. So I can just drag it and move it. Now, if I make that a little bit darker, you'll be able to see that more obviously. So there, the light, the lightest part is in the middle. If I drag it and move it, it centres it over that flower. And it's a much nicer effect. It's picking out the subject, which is what your vignette ought to be doing, really. But furthermore, I can use any of these other tools with the same vignette. So maybe 
I could take the clarity down and if you watch the outside what I'll do is I'll just move the slider quickly and watch the area outside the vignette here. If I just take the clarity all off I get a lovely blur around which can be a bit cheesy so just be careful how you do that. But but yeah a bit of clarity to further enhance the subject in the middle. Um, maybe I can take a bit of sharpness off. Maybe I can even take a bit of saturation off if I want to. Okay. I can also make the vignette a different colour. At the moment it has no colour effect, but if I click on that box, a dialogue box comes up. And I can click on any of these colours, and that's what colour my vignette will be. And as you can see with some of them, why on earth you would want to do that, I don't know. But there are creative effects to be had, you know, so you may want to use these. To go a little further with that, if you click and hold the eyedropper and come out onto your photograph and hover on a colour, it will pick that colour. So what you can actually do is you can pick a vignette, the change is quite subtle, but you can pick a vignette from a colour that's in your picture, so it's bound to work because it's there, it's in the picture. Or you can go wild and pick something dreadful from here. Okay, so I'm going to close that and I'm going to get rid of that one because it's a bit nasty. Let's just reset it and start again because we've gone a bit crazy there. Okay, now what I'm going to show you also is I'm going to put another radial filter on like we had before, just sort of over that area. Darken it off a bit, that's it, I'm happy. And as I say, the objective with the vignette is to try and enhance the subject of your photograph. Now what you can do with your radial filter is you can add a new one. So I've done with that one, I've made my vignette, the outside. What I could then do is take another radial filter, sorry, make a new radial filter, and I'm going to twist it a little bit, and I'm going to centre it on this flower, which is my subject. Now, as you see, everything outside the circle is affected. But if I go down here and check the invert box, come back up, now everything inside the circle is affected. So if I now take the exposure up, and you do need to be careful with this, obviously, but I could take the exposure up a little bit and I get a nice little glow from the inside of that flower. But then what if also I could add a little bit of texture to enhance the details of that flower, a little bit of sharpness, maybe even a little bit more saturation. All very subtle, but it's all there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn off those turn off the tool there so you can see the picture and I'm going to show you the difference that's made. So all we've done is added one radial filter to make the outside darker and then another one to make the flower brighter. And it seemed quite subtle but if you have a look when I turn it on and off it's quite profound actually. Without any vignettes or filters on there is quite a bright patch here. This was I, I was shooting through some other flowers, so this, this is why I've got this undefined area here. But this is quite bright and sort of vies for attention. This is detailed, so it brings some attention to it, but this is very bright, so it brings a lot of attention. By the time I've done with the vignettes, this has been dulled down and the flower has become a lot brighter, so there's no mistaking what my subject is. And that's about all I've got to tell you today. So have a play with those radial filters. They are an excellent tool. They're great for vignettes. You can stack as many of them as you like. Maybe I'll even put another new one on up in the corner here and take some of this darkness off there. Again, I don't want it outside, so I'll invert it. And put a bit of brightness in there and just take that dark edge off that corner. You know, you can use it for quite effective dodging and burning as well as your vignettes and etc. So when you've finished, click done, and there you go, you're good to go. 
So that's so that's just a few ways you can use a radial filter, but they are a great tool for vignettes. Have a go. Let me know what you think. Um, anything else you'd like me to go through, just drop us a note in the comments below. Okay, thanks very much. See you again soon. Bye-bye.